Hey Blobs, this is Ash. I'm going to be demoing Benthos in streams mode, which is a way of having multiple isolated streams all within the same Benthos process. And the idea is that we can manage those streams with a REST API. So what we're going to build is a cheeky little architecture like this, where we've got a NATS pub subsystem at the center. We're going to be continuously piping some sample data into that stream. Um, and then we're going to be fanning it out into these pretend customers uh, to their webhooks. And the idea is that each customer is going to receive a slightly different uh, stream of data. And all of these bridges are going to be a Benthos pipeline. They're all going to be these isolated um, streams. And I'm also going to use one for faking all these customer webhooks. And I'm just going to pipe them to standard out so we can actually see what's going on. And the idea is that all of these streams are going to be running in the same process. And we're going to create them with the REST APIs. So shall we, um, shall we just do that then? Shall we just get on with it? Yes, let's. Um, so the first thing I've done here is I've just set up NATS in the background. I've used Docker Compose to do that. Um, by the way, everything I'm about to show you is in the repo in this directory here, if you want to go check that out. Give that a cheeky gander, a little bit of a playthrough. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is the first thing that everybody else should do if you're going to follow these instructions, which is run Benthos in streams mode. And by default, that's not going to have anything going on. It's just going to be a clean slate. Um, there's no streams or anything in there. And what you can do is you can hit a few different endpoints on that service just to prove that that's the case. Um, so the port is 4195 by default. Um, and the API always, always starts at stream. So if I do a get on that, I just get back an empty object because uh, we don't have any streams loaded. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create the customer webhook uh, services. So I've got a little config called webhooks.yaml. And what this is, is it's a broker type. Um, and we've got three different HTTP server inputs and each one registers a path. Um, and then what they do is they prepend their customer um, name before any data gets then eventually popped to standard out. So what we'll see on the output um, of the Benthos and Streams mode is customer one received X, customer two received Y, customer three received Z. Um, so let's just run that. So the way that we create a stream um, through the REST endpoints is we hit um, the endpoint uh, slash streams slash and then foo, whatever we want to call the stream. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cat that YAML file. I'm going to pipe that into curl. And then what we'll do here is we're just going to say slash streams and we're going to call this the webhooks stream because we're faking some webhooks. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say data binary and at dash I think is the syntax and that looks fine so that should have loaded our stream and what I can do now is I can hit slash streams just to check and oh look at that we've got a webhooks stream and it's active so when you do a get on slash streams that will just give you a teeny bit of information so it tells you whether it's active or not and it also tells you the uptime um, but I can be a little bit more specific and do a get on my um, webhooks stream and that's going to give us quite a bit of information. I'm going to pipe this into JQ. So what we see first up is, oh, look at all this. So we see that it's active, same information as we've got before, whether or not it's active, the uptime, but then we also get this config um, section and that is going to echo back the exact configuration of the stream I've just done a get on. So this is just going to prove to us that we do have what we expected, which is an HTTP server um, input. And we've got three of those, one per customer. We've got a processor for each of these. And then we haven't got a buffer, we haven't got any pipeline processes, and we just pipe this to standard out. So yeah, that looks fine. Um, we can also do a get on stats, I believe, and that gives us a JSON object back of all the metrics within that particular type. So this is going to be very uninteresting because nothing's actually happened, but hypothetically a stream that's running, you could do a get request on that. Obviously, if you set up Prometheus or StatsD or whatever, your metrics will also get sent to that, um, but you could specifically do a curl request um, to get the metrics for a specific um, stream if you wanted to. So what are we going to do next? Let's, um, let's actually check that the endpoints have actually been registered. So what happens is, um, if you don't know already, when you create an HTTP server input type, um, what that does is it registers um, a path on Benthos's HTTP server, uh, which you can then post to um, to send data through the pipeline. And what we've just done is we've registered three 
um, and we've also registered them in a stream. So what would normally happen is if this is just a regular instance of Benthos, then the URL would just be whatever you specified. But because we're in streams mode, what should have happened is our webhooks URLs are actually going to be namespaced after slash webhooks. And that means that all these different um, stream pipelines uh, in the same process can register their own endpoints and they don't clash. Uh, so what we end up with is we've now got three um, HTTP server endpoints, slash webhooks, slash post, and then customer one, customer two, customer three. And if we post data to these, uh, we'll see it on standard out because that's the whole point of that config. So if it doesn't work, that's going to be very frustrating for me. So let's do customer one first. So I'm going to send some data, hello. And what we receive on the output is customer one received hello. So if I hit customer two, we get customer two received hello and so on and so forth. So um, as we're building the pipeline up, we should be able to see on this bottom window here exactly what data each customer is receiving based on the other streams we made. Now, the next piece of the puzzle I'm going to make is the um, data being piped into the NATS service at the center. So in order to do that, I've got a little um, a little cheeky config I've prepared earlier called trickle samples. So this config is called read underscore until. Um, and what we do is we have a read until input type. And what that does is it will continuously read a um, an input type that is a child um, until a particular condition occurs. And the condition in this case is a static false. So basically, this is always going to continuously read. The input type is a file where we're reading a sample, so slash sample.json. And this is going to have a line delimited set of sample messages, which I'll show you in a second. And then what we also do is we specify restart input, because what will happen is um, it'll read through all the samples in the sample file, and then the input will finish. Um, and what we want our read un underscore until input type to do is to say, oh, yeah, but you're not finished. I'm going to restart you because I'm continuously reading. So what we do is we say restart input true, and it will just keep reading the same sample file over and over again. Now, obviously, that's going to utterly ram our NAT server with data. It's going to be sending it hundreds of thousands of seconds. So what we do now is we say in our pipeline, we've got a single processor called the throttle processor, and we've put a period of three seconds. So what happens is we'll only send one message every three seconds, and that just gives us a constant trickle of samples. And our output type is just the NATS. Um, the subject is benthos underscore messages, which is the default. And our URL is the default. That's all good to go. I'll show you what's inside our sample.json file as well. So we've got one JSON object, which has a title, and then we've got some content. We've got another one, which is basically the same. It's sample two as the title and the same content. And then we have a sample number three, which doesn't have a title. It's just got content. And what we're going to do is we're just going to keep iterating over those three messages, sending them over and over and over again. So let's create that stream. If I cat the config just like before, and then I pipe that into curl. Um, I'm going to call this stream samples, and we say data binary. And then uh, boom. So now we've just gotten a little log message here saying uh, sending NATS messages to URLs. So that's telling us, yep, it's set that stream up. Uh, we're going to start getting data. I can obviously do all the same um, checks as I was doing before. So we could do a get on slash streams. And we'll see that actually there is now two streams going on. And we could also do a get on slash streams slash samples, do I call it? Uh, yeah. And that gives us the same info as I showed you before. So we actually get the full config. So I can see that the output type is NATS. That's correct. We've got a processor, which is a throttle type. That's correct. And uh, we've got this real underscore until. So what's going to be happening now in the background is we're continuously pushing these messages um, into our NAT stream. But there's actually nothing consuming the NATS uh, pub sub cube because we haven't set up any of those bridges yet. So we've got our web hooks on one side. We've got our sample coming in on the other side. Let's create the benthoses that are going to bridge these uh, three customers their data. So the first example I've got here is pipe to customer1.yaml. And this will read from NATS. Um, all this stuff is default. Um, and then what we do is we have a pipeline processor. We've just got the one. And this is a filter type. And the filter is a James path type. And what we do is we have a James path query here that gets the keys of the root object. So it's passing it as a JSON object, checks the keys, and it checks whether or not it has um, title. 
So basically what that's going to do is it's going to remove any messages that don't have a title. So what we should expect to see for customer one is only the first sample message and the second sample message and not the third. And then what our output is, is our output is an HTTP client output type where the URL is the webhook for our customer one. And the verb is post, obviously, because we want to post this data. So let's uh, let's create that as a stream. So we'll say cat put to customer one, put that into curl again. Five streams. We're going to call this customer one, and we want data binary binary. Boom. And now we've got a little message saying receiving that's messages, and uh, we're also sending messages via HTTP requests to blah. And now what we see is we see this trickle um, coming on standard out where we're showing which messages we're getting. And as you might expect, we're only seeing sample two and sample one. So we, we're never going to see a sample three uh, for customer one. So that's it. We've now created three Benthos pipelines. They're all completely isolated, doing their own thing in the background. Um, and by the end of that pipeline, customer one's receiving data, customer two and customer three out of luck, I'm afraid they're not getting any data right now. Now, before I start setting those pipelines up, what I can also do is obviously I can delete streams. So if I do a curl on customer one, we get that it exists, all that stuff. Um, if I change the verb to um, delete, then what we should get is the service doesn't exist anymore. So we're not getting any more samples on the output, so that's a good sign. Uh, but also I can do a curl on that thing and it should say stream not found. If I do a curl on streams, then again, I sh that stream shouldn't appear anymore. So what we've done is we created the stream, we started sending messages as webhooks to that customer, and now the customer isn't getting anything because I've done deleted the stream. Naughty me, let's set that one back up again. So if I do a cat again, and here we go, we're, we're getting the data again. Um, and let's just do a, just for good measure, should we just do a curl on streams again, just to make sure, just to make sure. And oh, look at that, customer one's back up. Um, right, so let's do the same with the other customers. So we're going to do customer two now. Um, boom, so now customer two's getting data. Now let me actually show you what the config for that is. So what's customer two going to be receiving? So this config is basically the same. The input is type nats. The output is sending the webhook to that customer. And what we do is we're actually going to add a little bit of data in here. So we're using a JSON processor type and the operator is set. And what we're going to do is we're going to set the contents of meta.4.customer2 to this little object here, which is it's just an object containing foo bar. Um, and that's it. That's what our uh, customer is going to get. So let's have a look at what they're actually receiving. So this might not be that clear. Um, how can I make this more clear? I'm actually going to stop these streams. That'll make it more clear. So if I do a delete on customer one, and customer two, that should stop the stream. So now what we can do is we can look at what customer two is receiving. So this here is a line that customer two received. So they got content for uh, sample one here. And as you can see, there is a, a new field meta, which contains an object four, which contains uh, a field customer two, and then that contains the sample object, which I just specified. So customer two is receiving the right thing. And we can also just double check that they, that was sample two um, here. And then did they also receive sample three? I believe they did. So this is sample three here. Um, we can tell because it doesn't have a title and customer one didn't receive that. So good, that's uh, showing everything's um, hunky-dory, everything's going well. So rather than um, just setting up those customers again and then doing customer three, let's do customer three first. So what customer three is going to get, let's have a look at this config. So they're going to get basically the same, except what we're going to do is we're going to do a JSON processor and the operator is type delete. And what we're going to do is we're going to delete the title. So customer three will receive all the data types, um, all the samples. Uh, but what we're actually going to do is we're going to cut out the title completely. So uh, in actual fact, all of these data samples are going to look the exact same in that case. Um, so let's do that. Let's uh, create that stream. Pipe that into a curl here. Streams, customer three, and then the data binary. Boom. And what do we get? So customer three just received content. This document doesn't have a title, but neither did the other samples either. So success, customer three is receiving all the samples and none of them have a title. So let's uh, combine all of these. Let's create the customer two again. 
and we'll also create customer three, uh, customer one, sorry, customer one. And that's it. So now we have all three customers receiving data. Customer one received, customer three received, customer two received, blah, blah, blah. and occasionally we'll get only customer three and only customer two receiving um, the third sample. Perfect. Right, what else can we do? So there's also endpoints um, for obviously getting the stats, the uh, information. Um, the verbs that slash stream slash foo supports are um, get, post, put. So put will change the config completely to a new config of an existing stream. And delete, delete obviously deletes the stream. Uh, another interesting one is patch. So you can patch a stream. And what that means is the object you give it will just be... Um, Will, will just be a single change. So you, you maybe want to change just one field. So what you can do is you can give it an object that only contains the bits that you want to modify. And what happens is the existing config will just have those changes overlaid and then the stream gets restarted with it. So actually, let's do a demo of that. So I'm going to delete the customer one, customer two. So now we've only got customer three. And let's just have a look at what the config is. So the config is... Um, here. So here we go. Uh, we've got a Nats input and we've got a subject benthos messages. So let's imagine we just wanted to change the subject. So input.nats.subject and we want to change that content to something else. Um, so rather than sending the entire config file again, uh, what we can do is we can just say patch. So what does that look like? So we can do x patch and then the data. Um, by the way, when you're sending a config, you can either do YAML or JSON. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to do input. And the input is nets. And we want to change the subject. So this is it. So whatever I pop, oops, sorry. Whatever I populate in here, so if I say hello world, for example, that's going to be the new subject. What it's going to do is it's going to overlay this object I'm sending here. Um, onto the existing customer three config and this is going to break it because well it's not going to break it it's just we're not going to get any data so i've just changed it so we can see our little status messages saying that the stream has basically been restarted if i do a get on the config and we narrow it down to just the input we can see that the subject is now hello world but all the other fields are the exact same as they were so if i check the output for example that's exactly as we configured it earlier um, and that's it so uh, that's streams mode um, I think that's everything I wanted to show. Oops, if it's not. Uh, hopefully that was interesting. Not really too bothered, to be honest. Um, give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, uh, don't ever give it a thumbs down. Um, yeah.